Tis I. Hey everyone, glad to see you back, glad to see you looking fresh. So, much like my last video talking about my favorite anime of the year, here we are talking about my favorite games of 2022. Now, this year has had a lot of games come and go. A lot of people would say a lot of them were disappointing, but even though I agree with them on some accounts, a lot of the games were absolutely excellent. For me, it was a very tough choice picking my game of the year. I have a list of 10 here that are ranked, including some honorable mentions, which we'll get to. But without further ado, let's just jump into this thing. At number 10, we have King of Fighters 15. Now, this is my first full Fiore into the King of Fighters universe. I have played some Fatal Fury games in the past and arcades and stuff, but never really being able to sit down and enjoy a KOF game to this extent. Now, like I said, I have played around with like Terry and Smash, and I know different characters from different locations. This is one of the most fun fighting games, I think, in modern consoles. And, you know, there's not a lot on modern consoles, so it has a little bit of a leg up. But there's a lot of fun to be had here. There's a lot of great characters. And it introduced a group of characters, specifically one from Samurai Showdown that I've wanted in KOF forever. Now, going into this, I remember they were hyping up every character as different announcements. And even though this one came out to be DLC, it didn't matter. I was still so excited to see him here. And he was immediately added into the three characters that I pick every time I play this game now. So we got Terry, we got Haomaru, and of course we have the king of the dinosaurs. He's the man. He's the beast. He's awesome. This game's awesome. I had so much fun with this. Absolutely. Give me a king of the dinosaurs figure or something. Give me some merch. I want that guy on a shelf forever. I love that guy. I love this game. Play it if you haven't already. It should have won Best Fighter at the Game Awards. It didn't. It was a shame. We're moving on before I get too angry. Number 9, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes is a pseudo-sequel, prequel, sidequel, I guess, to Three Houses, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Definitely, obviously, one of my favorite games on the Switch because of that. And to have more chances to hang out with this character roster, to be able to explore this world... Just, you know, to be able to hear the same voice actors again, bring such life into these characters, it is so great. It is so great. It's the same kind of feeling I had with all the Persona 5 spinoffs. Just to be able to exist in this world a little longer is just the greatest thing. Now, for me, it is probably... It might be the best Warriors spinoff. I haven't played any of the Mainline Warriors, so I can't really claim it's the best Warriors game but I think this is better than Fire Emblem Warriors. I think it's better than the two Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warriors games. And, and that just may be my fan in me talking. But these games are all about fan service. So in that aspect, I think they work phenomenally. And if you really like Three Houses, I think you should give it a try. It's a different gameplay style. It's a different story. You can experience it wholly new if you haven't experienced Three Houses yet. But play both. <laughs> play both. They're both great. Moving on, number eight, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. This is a long time coming for this game to come out. It is the longest stretch between Lego games, and it really shows. They put a lot of effort into this, the amount of worlds to explore, characters to unlock, levels to play. I joked for a long time that this was going to be game of the year this year, and while it didn't quite get there for me, while I played it, I had an absolute blast. The hype leading up to it was pure bliss. Just pure excitement on the highest form to be able to play a new Star Wars game. So much so, I made its own video about it. And I was able to talk about how much I loved the game then. And I can still talk about it now. And hey, maybe I'll go back 100% it one day. And I'll know that I'll have so many things to do and collect and explore. And I'll enjoy every minute of it. Number 7. This is a big one. This is a huge one. And for a lot of people, this is their number 1. And I can absolutely understand why. But for me, at number 7, we have Elden Ring. Now, you may hear that and are immediately screaming at me, how on earth is this only number 7? How are there 6 games better that came out this year? For me, this game did a lot of things amazing. But there are a lot of complaints I have with this game. Not that I want to get into it. I do not want to be negative at all in this video. But I have a plethora of different complaints about this game that, you know, I could love you and I could get more into. But also, I didn't finish it. There was a point at the game where I got so frustrated I stopped. Which 
is going to demote points. Even if the game was perfect up to that point, I would still demote points for that. But the fact of the matter is, I still haven't had the urge to go back and finish yet. When I do, that may raise the bar way higher. This may become the best game of the year. You know, I took an extended break from playing Witcher 3 the first time. Not for the same reasons. It was for different reasons. But, you know, I took an extended break. And when I came back to it, I loved it even more. And it became my favorite game of all time. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to happen with Elden Ring. But I'm saying the possibility is on the table. So don't hate me here. Number seven for me is still very high. The game is great. You know it's great. Everyone loves this game. If you haven't, try it. It's hard, but it's. I think it's worth it. Number six. We have Horizon Forbidden West. Now, if you know me, you've heard me complain about Horizon before. You heard me complain about the first game and how didn't love it, wish it was better. A lot of people love it. That's great for them, not for me. This game improved so many things I had wrong with that. So many that it's even hard to articulate what exactly it did so much better. But the fact of the matter is that it did. The gameplay felt better, it felt smoother, it felt faster paced, it felt tighter. There was a lot of times in the first game where I would be playing and just some dumb stuff would happen and I'd be like, that wasn't my fault, but I'm dead now and I have to suffer the consequences. This game felt more fair in that aspect. If you love these characters, you will love the fact that they have so much to say and there's so much to do in this world. It is one of the most beautiful games ever, especially on the PlayStation 5. It is gorgeous to see the highest snow-covered peaks, the desolate deserts, and of course those beautiful beaches. It's great. Fighting big robots has never felt better. Aloy is a great character, and I am actually excited to see where this franchise goes next, which a year ago, I would not expect me to say. Number five, Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. Kirby is just the best comfort food that Nintendo has to offer, and this is no different. This game is not hard by any means, but it is the most joyous ride through it. Having Kirby be in 3D, getting to explore, explore, there's still linear levels, but to pal around in this world, the copy abilities feel better than they ever have before. The enemies, the music, oh my god, that King DDD theme is so good. I really like this game. I'm so glad that it won at least something at the Game Awards. And hey, you should play it if you haven't because it's lovely and it's great. Number four, Pokemon Scarlet, Violet, and Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now I'm kind of cheating here. I'm combining two games, three games actually. But I didn't play Violet technically. So I would be talking about two games regardless. So just take out Violet and say Scarlet and Arceus. There, there's the two Pokemon games from this year that I love. And obviously, I am hugely biased because I love Pokemon. And these games gave me something I've wanted for a long time, which is open world Pokemon. The sense of exploration and fun and discovery in the Pokemon universe has never felt better than they do in these games. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have been talked to death, not by me, but plenty of others, about how shoddily put together they are, how buggy, how much slowdown there is, all the technical problems. But honestly, for me, I didn't care. I took the day off the day after they came out. I didn't want to work that Saturday, so I took the day off, and I no life to the game. So all I did that day was play Pokemon Scarlet, and it was one of the most fun times I've had in a video game, and I don't know when. And on terms of Arceus, it came out very early, and I wasn't expecting that much out of it. And it delivered on every promise it made. There was one part very early on in the game when it first let me explore, and I found myself at a river, and I see a magic carp off in the distance. And I thought to myself, I'm like, I can't throw a Pokeball that far. I can't catch him. But I wonder if I can lead him to me. Like a little breadcrumb trail, lead him all the way to the shore and then catch him. And that worked. And that sounds so simple, but that level of experimentation and reward has never been in a Pokemon game before. I got a level 19 Magikarp. Which, if you know anything about Pokemon, one more level and I have myself a Gyarados. In a time where the rest of my squad was like level 10. 
fantastic. Just, I felt so rewarded for thinking outside the box for the first time in a Pokemon game. I really, really like both of these, but because of their technical problems and even though i don't really care about how the games look that much i can't give it more than fourth place but fourth place is still very high higher than most people i would say so i love it we're moving on we moved from a game that got a lot of eyes that may not have deserved it to a game that didn't get enough eyes and definitely deserved it. number three that we're talking about tiny tina's wonderlands a game that was such a surprise to me because it is a pseudo sequel spin-off, I would say more, to the Borderlands game franchise. A game franchise that I've constantly tried to get into and really just couldn't sink my teeth into it until this game where I truly enjoyed it and I truly loved going through, doing every side quest, exploring every world. You know, I can vividly picture the crazy D&D inspired locale like there's grand fantasy stuff in here. Like there's a big mountain filled with trolls. There's a giant beanstalk and you get to go under the ocean at one point. And there's so much cool stuff in this game. The gunplay has never felt better. And there's magic and there's different trees of different abilities you can go down. Different character classes. So much stuff to do. I had such a good time playing this game. I legitimately thought about replaying it almost immediately after playing it that's how much fun i had and more people should have played it because i was shocked it didn't get nominated for anything so absolutely if you have not played tiny tina's yet go and do it number two god of war ragnarok it's a big one of course it's a big one of course it's here we're not gonna not talk about it is number two on my game of the year list silver medal much like the game awards i'm sure Kratos, Atreus, Freya, Mimir. It's so nice to be with these characters again in this world again. The action combat has never felt better. The story has never been grander. The boss fights, oh my god, harken back to the grand over-the-top boss fights of God of War 3. So much good to say about this. This game has some of the highest highs I've ever experienced in a game. This game has higher highs, I would say, than the number one game. But it also has some lower lows. Again, I'm not going to be too negative in this video. But God of War Ragnarok, you know what this game is. You should absolutely play the 2018 one first to get the full experience. Experience it. Love it. Have a blast. It's so rewarding. The action, like I said, is so rewarding. There's so many cool things about this game. To see what they do next is, I can't even picture. So let's see where God of War goes. Let's look to the future, because God of War Ragnarok was so great. I cannot wait to see what they do next. So before we get into number one, let's do some honorable mentions. We have Capcom Fighting Game Collection. Now, it's kind of obvious why this one was here. It's just a collection of old games that were ported over. Some of them never been to the West before, so that's kind of cool. Including all the Darkstalkers games, which is a collection of games I have wanted for a long time. So to have them all in one place is excellent. Stray, a lot of people call it the cat game. Looks great, you get to play as a cat. Pretty simple, pretty short, pretty fun. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder Revenge. Much like Stray is a pretty quick game, but a lot harder than a Stray. A lot of fun. And I think if I would have been able to play this game with friends, then uh, it would have been a lot higher. So keep that in mind. Triangle Strategy looks gorgeous. Filled that Fire Emblem hole in my heart, you know, until Warriors came out, I guess. I wish the ending was better. I really liked the game up until the ending. I don't think the ending was handled the best. It has diverging paths, and none of them felt right to me how they were handled, so... That's a little unfortunate. The rest of the game is great. A lot of great strategy in there. And the final one, Ono Mutation M, was this really cool pixel art 2D. It's kind of, like, it feels kind of Metroidvania. It's also a 3D pseudo open world. This game meshes a lot of different genres together, and it does all of them pretty great. Number one. Here we are. Game of the year. This took a lot of thinking. A lot of inner thought it took me a few days to start to pull this list together and finally when i had all the games laid out before me it took you know well over 
two hours to be able to pick which one was the best. But, evidently, it came down to one game. Now, it wasn't something as high profile as God of War. It's not something as big and expansive as an Elden Ring. It's not even something as familiar as a Pokemon. My game of the year was a game that came out a long time ago in Japan and never got ported to the United States and never received a localization until this year. It was forgotten about by a lot of people until it was announced to be coming to the Switch in a beautiful HD 2D art style. I am of course talking about Live Alive. When I played this game, I didn't think it would be number one. But thinking back on it, it's clear to me now that it is. This is one of the most interesting games created. Let's list off some of the things you can do in this game. You get to infiltrate a mansion as a ninja. You get to enter a Street Fighter competition and fight your way to the top of the world bracket. You get to be on a spaceship in the distant future as a robot. You get to go on a grand mystical quest as a knight to rescue a princess. You get to be a cowboy and rescue a small town from a gang of thugs. You get to master imperial martial arts in imperial China. You get to man a mech suit as a superhero. And you get to be a caveman and fight dinosaurs. What other game can even come close to those eight things? It's not even fair to think about it sometimes because this game is like eight mini RPGs. Each one so well made in what they're trying to do. Obviously I like some more than others but that's just the nature of having eight of them now isn't it? And not all of them are even like the same genre kind of. They're all RPGs. But one of them is much more of like a story being told to you as you're exploring. One of them has a whole map system that none of the rest of them do. One of them has a time limit kind of ticking clock that you have to work against. One of them doesn't really even have dialogue in it. This game should not work the way it does. It's beautiful. Its soundtrack is amazing. It plays phenomenal and it wraps up perfectly. And I mean perfectly. In a, a game where you have eight different main characters from eight incredibly different time periods. It wraps up beautifully. And I cannot recommend this game enough. Play Live Alive. Yes, it's called Live Alive for some reason, not Live Alive. Silly name aside, this game is amazing. One of my favorite games, my game of the year, an absolute must play if you want to switch. So that'll do it for my list of the games of the year. Do you agree? Do you not agree? Do you think I'm silly for putting Pokemon above Elden Ring? Probably. When I was making the list, it was very tough to admit to myself, yeah, that's what I want to do. If you've played Live Alive, if you played any of these games, any of these 15, absolutely let me know your experiences with them. If you haven't, give them a try. Some of these are pretty unknown. Like, Ano is... I have not heard many people talk about it at all, but it's a great little game that you should give a go. Like I said, I didn't expect number one to be number one, but thank you so much for listening and sticking with me. <laughs> as, as you heard, some of your favorite games come by, and of course I'm not able to play everything. There are some games I missed that unfortunately either came out too late or whatever, but I don't think it would have changed much, to be honest. I think number one would have been number one. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Like this if you like this, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you at some point.